Hey everyone, welcome to the next lesson in pre-education. I am excited to bring you guys a new video all about applying straight through to medical school. But first, let's get some coffee. Today's episode is going to be all about how to apply straight through to medical school. So that's what I'm doing. I am still in college while applying to medical school and I'll only get one summer off in between graduating and starting medical school. Some of you may have seen a previous video released by Med School Coach in which the founder, Dr. Mehta, talked about everything you need to know to be a pre-med. But what he did was talk about it in the context of taking gap years. However, there are still a large amount of students like myself who decide to go straight through to medical school. So I'm a senior, I'm in the application process, and upon graduation, I will have three months, about one summer's worth of time off before I start medical school. Well, Med School Coach has tons of resources that you can use to help guide you along this process. What I'm gonna do is lay it all out for you, talk about the big things that I tackled and focused on each of my years in college, and things that maybe you should think about if you're considering going straight through. Let's start with taking a look at the general application timeline for any student applying to medical school, whether you take gap years or go straight through. It takes about a year from start to finish and to matriculating. Most students take the MCAT well before submitting their primary application. In previous cycles, it takes about a month to get your MCAT score back, but due to coronavirus and things changing there, I got my score back within a week. I'm going to spend the rest of this video walking you through my particular journey on that timeline. Now, let's start with freshman year, year one. I decided to really just focus on school in my first semester of college. So no jobs, not a ton of extracurriculars. I joined a couple of clubs as most first year students do, but I really focused on school, really making sure that I had found my community, mastered my study schedule and routine, and felt like I was comfortable just doing college. Once that was done, I sort of jumped to the opposite side of the spectrum and jumped all the way into my extracurriculars second semester. I was working three jobs, I was in a couple of different clubs, starting to join e-board positions, really spending the majority of my days off campus. But keep in mind, while that gave me a lot of great opportunities, I really enjoyed my time getting off campus, it was extremely stressful. I definitely learned my lesson the hard way, and after that, I... <laughs> took a bit of time to reflect and realized I cannot overcommit in that way. And I will to this day call myself a recovering overcommitter because of that semester. All the while, throughout my freshman year, I knew that I wanted to go to medical school. So I was majoring in neuroscience and minoring in American Sign Language. In the back of my mind, I wasn't sure. I was thinking, maybe I'll take a gap year and get my master's in sign language interpreting. Maybe I will do more clinical research during a gap year. I really wasn't in a rush when I started college. It wasn't until my second year that I started to think otherwise. I really narrowed down my interest and focused on the things that I really enjoyed. So to get a little bit more specific, semester one of my sophomore year, I focused on my courses once again, and I also focused on making sure I was ticking off all of my pre-med requirements that you need to apply to medical school. For me, the University of Rochester has their own pretty list that I really went off of. Then the second semester, I dug deep into my extracurriculars again. So similar to freshman year, second semester, but I did so having learned my lesson. So I really committed to a couple of different things and stuck with them. I, at this point in the game, I had quit one of my jobs, really cut down on the other clubs and activities that I was involved in, and invested all of my time into the things I enjoyed. That was volunteering at the Rochester School for the Deaf, and working at the Center for Health and Technology. So after a year of being there, I had really planted roots there. People were starting to trust me and treat me like a equally contributing adult. And so I started to really dig deep into the projects I was working on. Most notably, I was working on the Parkinson Disease Care New York program. It is a statewide telemedicine program that offers telemedicine care to people with Parkinson disease across New York State. At that time, we were offering that care completely free. So I had my fair share of phone calls with people who were sobbing on the phone because they finally got care for their relative and I was the one to be able to give that to them. 
incredibly rewarding experience that now you see why I stuck with. My second semester of sophomore year, I was still leaning towards taking a gap year and getting my master's in sign language interpreting, but I had plenty of time before I needed to decide if that was the path for me. If you do want to go straight through, you'll have to start applying for medical school during your junior year. Roughly in the fall, you should have that idea in mind because you'll need to start your application or at least take your MCAT at, at the latest by April of your junior year. For me, I cut it very close for the application cycle. I didn't take mine until August, so the summer after my junior year. And for most students, that just means they're going to take a gap year because you won't get your score back in time to see it before you apply, which is a huge risk considering really anything can happen on the MCAT. But I felt that my application otherwise was strong enough to support a potentially lower MCAT score. Digging deeper into year three, my junior year. One second. So I started junior year and at that point I had my mind pretty made up that I was going to take a gap year, but after talking to a couple of different people, especially my boss, essentially they were telling me, you know, why not go now? Your application's strong, go for it. I think you'd be a great applicant. Let's do it. I'll support you. And with their support, I definitely jumped in and did it. So first things first, I was taking the MCAT way sooner than I anticipated. I decided to self-study because I really couldn't afford a course and decided to take the MCAT at the end of April. So my second semester junior year, I was only taking three courses so that I could leave that opportunity for a fourth course to be dedicated to MCAT studying. Junior year me was really ambitious and thought that I could handle that on top of studying for the MCAT. But in reality, I didn't want to let my grades slip. So my classwork ultimately ended up taking priority. And coming up to April, I did not feel good about my potential MCAT score. Coronavirus happened and everyone was stuck in quarantine, things were getting shut down, and the idea of MCAT exam dates being postponed or canceled put me a little bit at ease. So I kind of took a risk and pushed off all of my studying really just to ace my coursework for that semester. And I didn't start studying for the MCAT until like the beginning of April. That test date was canceled, which I was banking on. And I originally moved it all the way back to June. Then as that date approached, I still didn't feel ready. But no matter what, I kept remembering the advice that so many people before me had given me. Only take the MCAT when you're ready. And I wasn't feeling ready in June. So I pushed it again to August 1st. That was against the advice of many of my advisors, classmates, peers. However, I had to do what was best for me. And I felt strongly that if I pushed it to August, I could still get the score that I needed to succeed. And so I did it. So I started my primary application in about June and I was still studying for the MCAT. So as it, August rolled around, I took the MCAT and a week later I got my score, cried tears of joy because I got just the score I needed to feel like a competitive applicant still, and I went ahead. I didn't get my score until after I had submitted my primary application. Oddly enough, the day that I took the MCAT, I started getting secondary applications. So I applied to about 18 schools and I submitted all of those with roughly a three week average turnaround, which is a little bit longer than what everyone seems to suggest. But honestly, it's don't stress yourself out. For anyone who applies to more than 10 schools, it's really difficult to have a two week turnaround for every school that you apply to. With the MCAT behind me and secondary applications still rolling in, I enjoyed the last bits of my summer, took the CASPER exam, and I also did the AAMC VITA interview, the virtual interview. I started my senior year of college 100% online. In October, I started to get my very first interview invites. And right now I'm in the winter break between my first and second semester of my senior year. Just as a reminder, one more time, because I applied straight through to medical school, I'm applying to medical school while being a full-time undergraduate. And oftentimes that can take up a lot of your time between all the time it takes to write secondaries, missing full days worth of, worth of class or work to go to interviews. You really have to stay on top of it, stay organized, check your email all the time. And also keep in mind that your financial situation plays a big role in the number of schools that you apply to, the number of interview invitations that you accept, and the outcome of this application cycle. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned at least something. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. That really means a lot and goes a long way. And I will see you next time for the next lesson in pre-education. Bye.